All right, I want to make another video to talk about this um, sine wave generator for the ESP32. Um, first of all, um, as you may have seen in the comments on the video, I have upgrade, updated this the, um, software so that it uh, now uses a um, an array rather than a uh, linked list. So that just makes it easier to uh, understand the code. Here's where it populates an array. Um, just um, determining the values uh, with the just simple sinusoidal, uh, you know, formula, and then sticking values into the array, and then um, you know, based upon the um, based upon the desired uh, frequency and the samples per second, uh, you can figure out the number of samples per wave, and then uh, size the array that way, and then put the values in. As necessary so that you have all of the steps needed to um, create one complete wave and then uh, based upon the internal timer from the ESP32 uh, it then triggers that call to um, on timer uh, with the appropriate uh, frequency so that the wave is produced um, there are some limitations however and that's why I wanted to make this uh, video and the limitations are um, they come from the hardware um, you can request whatever samples per second you want right here in this setting, config setting in the software, but that doesn't mean that the hardware can deliver that. And since the software is not aware of the um, that limitation, uh, you may fool yourself into thinking that you can get uh, you know higher frequencies. But I wanted to kind of demonstrate that, so I've got it set up to um, produce a three thousand hertz uh, signal at uh, 100,000 samples per second, and uh, it's running. So here's the waveform. <clears throat> uh, down here it says um, 33 samples per cycle, uh, 10 microseconds per sample. So the step size is 10 microseconds. I'm gonna expand this out so we can look at that. There we go, and I'll just stop it. So here we have zero, and here we have two, four, six, eight, ten. So there you see the step size, it's 10 microseconds. Um, so let me go back into the code and I'm gonna change this to um, 200,000. Now what I've discovered is that, um, in fact, excuse me here, 200,000, that looks right. What I've discovered here is, um, at least with my um, ESP32, it's the, the Woom 32D or something like that, um, I can only get uh, about 188,000 samples per second maximum out of the um, out of the hardware. So let me save that, build it, and um, load it into the ESP32, and, and we'll see what happens. So. Um, all right, upload it now. Just bear with me. Almost done. Okay. So based upon that mathematics, um, it says microse microseconds per sample of um, five microseconds. Okay, 66 samples per cycle. If we go over here and uh, run this, here we go. Um, let's just first we'll uh, look at the waveform. So that's what it looks like. And if I expand it out and we look at the actual step sizes, let's see. Uh, stop it. Let's see if I can move it over a little bit. So. Um, Yeah, give me a second here. There we go. Okay, so starting from here, this is zero. So we got one, two, three, four, five, roughly 5.3, 5.4 microseconds um, is the best you can do with the hardware. Um, and you can see that... Um, Let's see, let me um, 
run it again and enlarge this thing so we can see the actual frequency. And here we go. So you can see it's getting it's delivering 2.8 kilohertz. So we had asked we had asked for three kilohertz, but because the hardware can't deliver it and the software is producing steps under the assumption that the hardware can deliver it, <laughs> the timer is only able to trigger the call to write those steps or output those steps to the DAC pin every 5.3 microseconds um, instead of what it should be, which is five microseconds. And therefore, the output is only 2.8 kilohertz and not three. So you have to be a little bit care careful. Um, you can do some experiments if you're gonna test this code at all and do what I did, which is basically come in here and uh, bump up that uh, samples per second and see at what point you don't get the output frequency that you expected, it starts to drop. And uh, if you have a, an oscilloscope, you can see those steps uh, and, and actually with a, the uh, minimum step size you can get out of the hardware. Um, just one final note, I did a little bit digging to see whether there's a way to optimize this further. And um, according to the research, it's the one method is to use the SP32's built-in peripherals, which is what we're doing in this code. Um, it's simple to use, but the performance may be limited um, due to the overhead of the interrupt handler. It says number two, there's three methods. Number two is to use the free a real-time operating system software timer, which allows you to create timer tasks that run on a background and a scheduler by the free RTOS kernel. This method can provide higher performance than using the built-in perifer peripherals. Um, I tried to do that, but I wasn't able to get the uh, libraries that apparently are needed, uh, so I may have, may have to do some work on that. And then the third option is to use direct memory access controller. Um, there again, it's it's supposed to be higher performance, but the code gets a little bit more complicated. You're talking about direct um, calls into the memory of the hardware. I tried to do that as well. And um, actually the second one, I think I did succeed in that, but it, I didn't get that much better performance. Trying to do number three, um, I failed at that. Uh, and maybe I'll go back to that at some point and see what, what can be done. Um, so that's, um, that's about it for this video. I just wanted to update um, that uh, we've gone from a linked list to an array and that provides better performance, but we still are limited um, within the hardware to about 188,000 uh, samples per second, which is about 5.3 microseconds per step. Okay, thanks for watching.